What is going on everyone? Tutorial Tim here at Design Academy and today we're going to be building out dialogues and we're going to start off with understanding what dialogues are and how they're used and why and we're going to build out variants of that dialogue and I'll also challenge you to building out some variants as well. I have all of the screenshots here specified of the variants we'll be making and then we'll go ahead and just dig into the documentation by opening this link. Once you have that open here you can see that Dialogues inform users about a task and contain critical information and require decisions or involve multiple tasks within that dialogue. So here we can see that this dialogue is triggered based on a button, right? And you'll notice that there's this background overlay. We That's called a scrim and we have that in our design system as a color style, not only as a color style, but a scrim that we can pull from our system. So if we go to our Figma file, Let's just enable that here. Uh, if we go access our team library model, turn on the material design system library, I could go ahead and search for Scrim and we already have it accessible. We can drag and drop it uh, here to utilize later. So that is a Scrim for you and used in this context. And then you can see that there's some elevation around the edges of this dialogue being used and there's a divider. And in this, in this confirmation variant, you'll see that there's this menu with some content overflowing. So we'll go ahead and build out uh, this, this variant. And we'll go ahead and build out a, what is labeled a simple dialog here in this interactive demo, where we have list items here. And you'll notice that the states of these uh, do not span the entire width of the dialog, which is interesting. So if we were to inspect the code, you'll see that this, this is a list item and there's some, some padding set to 16 on the left and right of this element. So that is important to note there. And on top of that, in the parent element, there is a padding of eight on, on the left and right as well. So that is padding on the left and right of this dialog that is not applying to the list item. So that's why there's there, the, the state there is not taking up the full width of that element. And I'm gonna, Close that inspector element. And now we also have an alert dialogue variant as well, which we'll be building. And not only are there those variants for that, but you see there's one with just body copy, just text and with a title. Um, or, you know, we have the button side by side, or we have the option to have two buttons stacked. Uh, to me, I prefer the side by side variant. That seems to be a much more common pattern utilized. And you'll see that there are other options as well in this dialogue. Uh, not for simple, but for the confirmation, there's the uh, stacked variant of buttons as well and side by side. Um, and we're going to just go ahead and kind of uh, just understand the usage. So a dialog is a type of modal window that appears in front of an application or app content, right? To provide critical information or ask for a decision. Dialogs disable all app functionality when they appear and remain on screen until confirmed, dismissed, or a required action has been taken. And these are purposely interruptive, which is which refers back to how this is displayed in front of app content. It is purposely interruptive, so they should be used sparingly. And there's some principles around this component where it is uh, focused. It focuses the user attention to ensure their content is addressed at that point in time quickly. Um, dialogue should be direct in communication, uh, in communicating information and dedicated to completing a task. Dialogue should appear in response to a user task or an action with relevant or contextual information. So it is very helpful and direct. And here you can see when to use either a snack bar banner or dialogue and a dialogue is used when these these uh, the the task at hand needs to be very focused and is is considered high priority so it blocks the app content uh, below it uh, until the user takes the actions on the dialogue or exits the dialogue if that option is available and here you can see some examples there on mobile and and the anatomy breakdown we got the container uh, title here, some supporting text, and the buttons and the scrim in the background, which we've already pulled in our Figma file. And we got some specs down here. Uh, we're going to just go ahead and dive right in and start building some of these elements out. So we can go ahead and start with the desktop mobile alert. So I'm going to grab this here. I've already had these labeled to place in our sticker sheet. And what I'm going to do is select these images and move them over. 
And here I've referenced the, the type styles as well. So we know what to utilize. And with this specified, I'm gonna set the width to 560 dips. And with the width specified properly, I'm gonna set the height to 182 dips and uses a corner radius of four dips. And then it uses the color surfaces surface for the background, the fill. And then of course, it utilizes the effect style of elevation of 24 dip there. And now we have the baseline specified. We can go ahead and rename this component to desktop forward slash mobile alert as that is the uh, dialog variant labeled a material design. And we're gonna go ahead and create an H6. Uh, with an H6 created, I'm gonna label this dialog header as specified uh, in the file there in this screenshot. Set the auto, the sizing to auto width, the resizing. Go ahead and select my H6. And with that specified, we can go ahead and rock and roll here. I'm gonna snap this to the top and, um, and left. So it's 24 dips from the left. And the baseline set to uh, 40, which I believe is 24 dips from the top as well. And we can go ahead and double check that here by just creating a rectangle and pushing this content down. So the baseline is supposedly set to 40. So I actually need to go ahead and push this up a bit and the, in turn making that padding 21 dips from the top there uh, with the baseline set to 40, as you can see. So now that that is specified, we can go ahead and specify our uh, color style for that header and go ahead and to our color styles text and iconography and select the high emphasis color style. I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate that text and select the body one color uh, textile. And now we have the proper textile set. We need to specify the color style to medium emphasis. And uh, what we can do essentially is specify the bounding box of this. And by specifying the bounding box here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start to just pay attention to these specs. And the baseline is supposedly set to 36 dips from the baseline of the header. So we could essentially just do that, create a, whoops, create a, push this rectangle down to the baseline, set that to 36 here. So I just need to push this content up a tad. So now the baseline set to 36 there. And the bounding box here is set to 24 dips on the left and right of this text box. So what I can do is address this to be a fixed text box. And that's currently at 23. Let me push that three pixels in. Now it's at 24. And we wanna set the constraints to left and right. So I'm holding shift and selecting that right constraint. And then what we can do is uh, if I keep typing lorem ipsum delore sit amet and just keep on typing and a new line will appear. So with that new line appearing, we're good to go. Uh, we now just need to justify that the, uh, our, we, have our, we need to justify our text buttons here and our text buttons will potentially be um, 28 <clears throat> dips from the baseline, from the bottom here, from the, the container so here, what I'm trying to explain is that the height of this bottom portion of the dialog is emphasized. So it's essentially in, you could think of it as being in its own row where the content being the buttons within this bottom row here, almost like the footer of this dialog, uh, utilizes two buttons and the height set to 52 and it's centered within that, that bottom uh, row there. And this, text is essentially what this is saying is that this body copy is 28 dips the, from the from the baseline of of the text here you see that distance from here to that that container row so to really uh, get that precise what we can do is I'm going to create a frame here uh, you could call this dialog you could you, we will reference this as footer and I'm going to specify the height there to 52 dips and of course, uh, snap that to the left and bottom. It's gonna hold command and stretch that out, out and specify the constraints there to bottom, left and right. And we, there's no need for a background. 
and we need to implement buttons into this. So if we grab, open our team library, uh, go to text button. If I type in button, I got my text button there and it's labeled in the spec as action one. And I duplicate that and it's eight dips away from this button and then modify that text to say action two. We are rocking and rolling. We can go ahead and bring this in and actually just drag this into that row and specify, see how it is center aligned? Uh, that So essentially our spacing is all proper. It's good to go. We have the proper spacing there, eight dips between the two buttons and to the right and the bottom and the top because of the height being specified to 52 for that bottom footer and we're good to go. And all we need to do is really just justify the distance here between here and the, so 28. So we're essentially two, two pixels off, supposedly. Um, but this is accurate enough. Um, and it is 23 dips away from, from there, the text box. And we can go ahead and modify that so it's set to 24. So now it's 20. 24 dips away and we are good to go. This is all uh, properly spaced and we now have this mobile alert dialogue variant uh, which is uh, up to spec and we can make that a master component. Um, before I do, I'm going to duplicate that and it's a main component, I apologize. So we have our main component variant. I'm gonna drag that in here and now that we have our main component variant, um, I'm going to go ahead and see what we'll tackle next. What should we tackle next? Well, we can go ahead and create this confirmation dialogue with actions. Um, nothing too special about this. Um, the width isn't actually specified in this and it would kind of just be uh, tedious to build that one out. Um, so let's start with this one. Actually, now we do have all the details necessary. Uh, disregard what I stated. Uh, we're gonna build out the mobile confirmation dialogue. So I'm gonna copy that there. Go ahead and rename this. Now that I've renamed it, I need to specify the width. And we have the two actions and what we can do is this will resize because we have the constraints set properly and we need to set constraints to both these buttons. And these buttons currently are, are snapped to the top and left of its parent frame, but we need to snap to the bottom and right. So when it resizes, it'll resize properly. So what we can do is we have all the properties specified properly. So we're good to go. All we have to do is set the width from 560 dips to 280 dips. And look at that. We have everything constrained proportionally. The only thing is we need to push this content down. And with that content pushed down, um, with the content pushed down, we should just specify the spacing between this text and the, the footer row. And as you can see, it's 28 dips away from the baseline. So let's go ahead and ensure that that is implemented properly. It's gonna change that to 28. And what we're gonna do is make sure that when we resize this, this parent frame is, uh, I'm gonna set a ruler here within this frame right here. So as I resize it, I know that it, as I resize the parent frame, I know we need to push this up one more pixel. I was hoping that the red line would help me align the content, but it does not actually do that. It's not responsive. Those red lines, they stay in place. Um, and then I'm going to drag this text box down and just ensure that that's set to 24. So there we go. Got that proper spacing there on the left and right and bottom. And we now have our confirmation dialog variant there. And again, this is adhering to uh, a one line uh, variant. Uh, there's also, this is also indicating a two line dialog header there with two lines. So we could even go ahead and do that if we wanted to. Um, so I can go ahead and do that real quick. So we will have to push down this content essentially. So with that, I'm gonna just push this copy down and then write two dash line dialogue header. We now have our two line. I'm gonna push this up 
to 14 because that gives me the proper uh, spacing here of 36 uh, dips there uh, from, from one baseline to another. So that's set to 36 as I've stated, which is awesome. So that's properly uh, proportionally implemented. And now I just need to justify the spacing of between this text and the actions. Uh, the, so that's set to 28 dips. So what we can do is, uh, this should be much easier, is uh, actually go ahead and push this content, create that 28 dip rectangle to align things, and just push this up four, four dips there and delete it. And now our baselines are aligned as specified in the spec. And what I can do is select resize to fit or the shortcut key shift option command R, and that should resize the content to the parent container, which is awesome. Or you could just hold down command until it until it snaps to your container, and you now have your two two line dialog header. And we can go ahead and create this confirmation dialog with long actions that are stacked. So the difference between this one is that these buttons are side by side, and these are stacked. And all we have to do is, uh, we're gonna have to do a little uh, well, moving around here. So uh, there, in this scenario, there's the concept of the footer doesn't need to be utilized, it could be. Uh, we're, I'm gonna remove that, and what I'm gonna do is uh, rename this to turn on speed boost. And with that specified, I'm just gonna align these properly and then make sure they're 12 dips in distance apart and make sure that um, there are eight dips from the right of this frame. So it's eight dips from the right and it should be eight dips from the bottom as well. So now that we have that specified, we have our two buttons, but what we need to know is the baseline. So eight, 28, so 36 dips from the frame here. So we need to specify 36 dips from the frame. Essentially what I did was I just calculated uh, the, dis the distance from this baseline and the distance from this between this button and here, and that's 28 plus eight, which is uh, 36. If, I, if I'm doing my math right, and I can just go ahead and drag this up till it snaps there, and we're aligned. So I have that appropriate spacing, and now all I need to do is make sure I drag up the bottom of this element so that it is eight dips from the bottom of the button. And I could apply my constraints that are already set properly, and we are good to go. Uh, I'm gonna just specify that this is a confirmation dialog with long actions. And I'm gonna make that a main component. And next up, we can create the uh, mobile alert dialog. So I just attached my instance, labeled this alert dialog. And the alert dialog is very simple. It doesn't even have a header. It just utilizes body copy. So what we can go ahead and do is uh, add 52 plus 28 plus 38. Whoops, you can't do math. Uh, 28 plus 38. I don't know why it's not doing the math for me there. Uh, so 28 plus 38 is 66 plus 52. That's 118. So the height of this element is gonna be 118. So what we can do is just set this to 118. And now we can put this text, push this text up, just make it one line. And now that we have that one line, I'm gonna set the typography to resize the width automatically. I'll, I'll then ensure that the baseline is set appropriately. 
So it's set to currently uh, 38 dips from, from the top. Right now it's 40, there we go, we got 38 there. And I can push this content up, excuse me, and now I can create a fixed text box. And I want it to be 24 dips from the right. Uh, or, or 624, so if I push this in a little more, I got 22, and now I have it set to 24. And then with that specified, I also want the text box to be uh, eight dips from the bottom here of this, uh, from the bottom of the button's outer frame. So currently that's set to four. Now it's set to eight there and we're good to go. We have all the proper uh, spacing specified for this alert dialog uh, and we are good to go. That is it. Uh, maybe we can just rename these to cancel and uh, discard. And what we can do here is just ensure the proper spacing. It's set to 12 currently, set that to eight and then push this over uh, four dips. Now it's properly spaced uh, eight between the buttons and bottom and right of the buttons. So that's great. And now we have our mobile variant of our alert dialog. And now that we've created three of these, um, I, I, can ch I wanna challenge you to uh, building out this dialog header here. And what you can see that it uses is, uh, if we go to our list items, uh, we could easily see that we could use this variant here that I just pulled the with the icon and text and this action, which is another icon. And we can resize this accordingly. Um, we can go ahead and actually build this together by modifying some existing list item components that we have. So with that said, we have a, we're gonna just perfect this uh, this list item here. So we're gonna label this icon and text. So I've got that list item. And of course we've applied constraints already to this so it will be working out of the box because because uh, we've already defined that. And we're just gonna set the height of this to 56 dips. Content stays centered as needed and as expected. And then we'll set the height of this to 40 by 40 but we want the height of the icon to be 40 by 40. So if I go ahead and implement this, the icon currently is set to 33.33. So what we can do is uh, I can detach this, ungroup it, and I just wanna make sure I'm scaling the vector properly. Um, and the frame set to 40 by 40, as you can see. Um, and we can just use temporarily. We have a placeholder, so if you needed to actually, you know, refine that icon later on, uh, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm just going to use this placeholder, so I don't have to mess with the modifying the the icons that are uh, systematically built from for material design. I'm just going to change the quarter radius on this icon placeholder, so it's 40 by 40, um, and it is 24 dips from the the left of, of this list item. So now that I've moved that content, that's great. And the text is 20 dips to the left of, of the, the icon as well. And I'm gonna make sure the constraints are set to left and center vertically. And the constraints are good to go on this uh, text here. And all I have to do is I could rename this here so that the text is matching the what's specified in the spec. And what we can do is just duplicate this and align this to the bottom of the next list item and just label this user two. And then I can duplicate this again and just type in add account and feel free to modify the fill of this and change that to the image type and add an image as needed. Um, as it utilizes icons there. And now that the spacing specified on these three list items, let's go ahead and make the parent container. So our pa parent container, I would imagine is set to, uh, two, well in this case set to 320 or 280 as specified here. 
and that seems like the same width as a simple dialog. So I'm gonna create a frame, go to my sticker sheet and copy that naming convention and rename this to the mobile slash simple dialog. Set the width to 280, corner radius to four, color style, the fill to surface to surface, and then the effects to uh, have the effect style of utilizing elevation of 24 dips. And with that, we're gonna modify the width here to, uh, whoops, the width is, should be good to go. Uh, what we're gonna do is add a an H6 here. What I can do is just copy the H6 here and then, or I can grab this one liner H6 that I've already created and it will position it within this element. And we need to check and ensure that the baseline of this is set is 40 dips from the top of this frame. And with that, let's see, set that to 40, just push, essentially just pushing that up slightly and now that is good to go. We have our dialogue header. And it is wrapped in a, a frame that has a height of uh, 64. So I'm gonna set the vertical constraint to center on the text. So when I resize the frame I just wrapped it in, it will stay in position as needed. So it's set to 60, now it's set to 64. The height is set to 64 dips and it did not properly do what I wanted it. So I'm gonna Make sure it's centered within that frame. Then push that to the top. Hold down Command and resize this header frame. Uh, header. I'm going to label that header. Now I have that set properly. And then all these list items will stack on top of this frame. So I can now that they're stacked, these are appropriately sized. I just need to adjust the width, and we're good to go. All I need to do is justify. Uh, resizing this uh, bottom portion and I may need to add uh, 16 uh, dips there at the bottom it's currently set to 8 so I need to increase that set to 17 push that up one and we're good to go so we now have achieved our simple dialogue variant and we have a couple more to create if we want. Um, I'm actually going to challenge you to building out the last two elements. And what you're going to find yourself doing in creating these last two is we've created these four together. But in these dialogues, you're going to find yourself building out some complex uh, dialogues here. You're going to come across... The, these items where the items overflow and are are being hidden because of the overflow because we have this these actions appearing above and the user can scroll through these items and select one. So I'm going to challenge you to building that and also challenge you to building out this full screen dialogue. Uh, what you're not building are these text input fields in the interface. You could, um, but for the full screen dialogue, uh, we might that's just a bonus for you to create uh, and challenge yourself. And yeah, I'm just going to pause this video and build out this scrolling confirmation dialog and I'll be right back. So I've now built out my scrolling confirmation dialog variant for mobile. And essentially what I did was I just recreated, I, let me go ahead and grab it. So our other mobile variant our simple dialog, what I did was I copied this detached it and I went to my assets and grabbed my radio checklist variant and then I wrap that in a frame I set the height as you can see here to 48 and I just specified the proper spacing between all the elements within this list item then I just duplicated them and they were because they're supposed to stack on top of each other and since our uh, buttons are labeled properly I was able to just swap them between the two states, which was awesome. 
set the constraints to vertically uh, be centered if this height ever gets modified. And then I, I grab the footer here and move that to the top of the layer order so it look like it looks like you're able to scroll through this content as indicated here. And this footer was already created. All I had to do was add a divider into this uh, element and I snap that divider to the top here in the footer element in the footer frame and that's all I had to do and that's how I created that dialogue there and yeah that was how I built that and that is all I have to show you today in building out dialogues I hope you learned a lot and enjoyed this video and I challenge you uh, as a bonus to create this full screen dialogue and thank you so much for watching as always I really appreciate it and I hope you learned a lot and I'll catch you in the next one